G'day folks. Well over the years we have filmed hundreds of incredibly talented people across the world. Many of these artists have gone on to produce their own videos as well. We hope you enjoy this great lesson from one of our Colour in Your Life artists. Hi guys, Shirley Peters here. Uh, welcome, welcome to Colour in Your Life special. I have made a video, in fact I've made a long video and I've chopped it into three because it's just too much um, in one go. Um, video uh, acrylics take a long time and I like to do it in real I like to film in real time so therefore it's not too um, I don't jump ahead except this one section in this video where I have skipped ahead and that was because I had a bit of a, a camera fail I blame the tools anyway this is the this is the painting that I ended up with I'm really happy with it and uh, from scratch to from go to woe, uh, if you watch these three videos, you'll be in a way looking over my shoulder, which is nice. Okay, so without much ado, I'll get going and uh, you guys can start watching. Thank you. Uh, it's raining today and I'm going to paint my yard. Oh, I sort of am, if I can get, <laughs> I can get back to my studio. Oh, you know what, it's all muddy. Hang on, I'll just wipe my feet. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to paint what you have around you. I'm lucky, I've got a plein air situation right here. So, but if you look out any window, you might, you might see neighbors, neighbors roofs. You might see um, the odd tree or you might see stuff. If you go right around your house <laughs> and you hunt. I know because I lived here for 37 years, we lived at Putney near Ryde in Sydney and uh, we didn't have great views out any windows to tell you the truth I never painted out them but nowadays this is a sort of a day where you should have a go in this case I'm going to paint a dam so I'm pretty lucky and I'll take a still photo and I'll put it on my website so you guys can download it if you want to use this particular image or you can get your own anyway I can't walk straight in the door because I don't have a mat I have to go around that's good. Uh, my dam at the back is full. It was half full yesterday. We've had so much rain overnight that it is now full. It's lovely. So I'm going to paint that. And I have a canvas. Uh, I'm, I make my own canvases on the whole. Sometimes I buy them, but on the whole I make them and that will be another video coming soon. I shall be using my acrylic paint, which I store like that in one of these plastic boxes that I think are called tackle boxes but it's kind of like my palette my acrylic palette and I put them I squeeze each tube into or I oh, just wonder if I need to top some up I, I squeeze the tubes in with and I mix it with medium and a flow medium it doesn't matter really flow or general acrylic medium not retarder I don't I haven't tried retarder, I just am a bit worried about that because, like this one here, binder medium I use. If I was to um, use a retarder, I think it would slow it. For starters, the reason I use acrylic, I want it to dry fast. That's an asset. And it, it drives me nuts. The other day I was out plein airing with some friends and uh, we, I was using oils. And to tell you the truth, I found it really really hard now this is a problem some of my paints I don't know if you can see this some of them are totally they're like they've gone all uh, dried out so I'm not even sure that this one's going to be worth using but I'll put it in there anyway and I'll add a whole lot of medium to it I'll put a little camera on this so you can see what I'm doing I'll add medium and people say sometimes to me what how much medium to how much paint and everyone every different paint varies because some come out drier and stiffer and some come out very runny so you will know just by squeezing it out how much to put in because and you will have your own taste I like it fairly runny like um, say soft toothpaste I think would be the way to describe what I how I like to have my paint ready to go so 
basically what I'm doing here is mixing it up so that it's basic, ready to go and I don't have to do this every time I, I go for new paint. It's just at the right consistency for my liking. And the reason I started doing this was because I was doing a lot of plein air, really, really big ones on paper. And uh, in fact, my Colour In Your Life video uh, outside is, is a pretty good example of that. I, uh, but even bigger, I have very, very big paintings that I've done in plein air and I need a lot of paint ready to go. And I was taking out all my jars of paint like these, all different, you know, 20 of them. And it just took me forever to set up. So, and I was putting the lids back on each one and opening and putting the lid back on and it was taking forever. So what I do now is I mix this, sorry, it's gonna take a while. I'll just chat and mix it up till it's the right consistency. Okay, I think that's good enough at the moment. Below this video, I'll put a link to everything I use. So, the binder medium as well. Oh, this is sort of my palettes. So I've, I've bought some um, storage boxes recently and they come with lids and I don't use the lids because the, the base I've got for the box is so narrow the lid doesn't fit. So it makes it makes a wonderful palette for when I'm um, painting with acrylic. Just got to decide which side I'll use. This is the smoother side. This is smooth all over so I think I'll use the underside. It's got a sort of a tray around the outside. I could I could even sort of really go go nuts on this. This is quite good. Anyway, um, I shall start by drawing up this painting, this scene in uh, um, sort of like a, probably a, mm, I think I'll use my raw, no, burnt umber. I'll use a burnt umber. So what I do is, uh, hang on, I'll put, it, I'll put my camera. So what I like to do is fish out the paint onto here. And you know what, I'm going to use a little bit of the, if ever I dip into this pot, I try to clean my palette between times so I'm not contaminating. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to my brown. So basically I'm going to start with a very, very dark colour, drawing in the shapes. So I'll mix those two together. Now, just wondering, still not quite confident that I've got this in the right angle for myself and for you guys. Yeah, the beauty about outside there is it's very, um, it's bleak. It's a very, it's a white sky and I think I'll start with uh, trying to just, just to see, thinking of doing um, this, Maybe back at, the, maybe about there. Got to get the, the proportions might end up not being quite right, by the way. I might end up uh, telling a few visual lies. So that's the dam, basically. Just might centre it completely. I just make it a little bit off to one side. And this is just a little bit up, not quite halfway. And then I've got lots of trees behind here. So I'll just put in some verticals. I'll give an idea of how the top will end up. So I won't, probably won't be in the right proportions for the top of those trees. I've, I've shrunk them down a little bit to what they are compared to the dam. Another tree there. Okay. With the dam here, I've got some lovely areas of the dam that are just water running down to them when the water flows the water's running down to the dam at the moment it's just stopped raining so it's not quite as wet as it was earlier on when i decided this would be my scene so around about the, here is going to be basically a feature so because you can see i'm just mixing in i'm just stabbing into this dark choice of color and Go right up like that. It's a slightly crooked tree. 
got to lean on it. It's an angophora. It's actually in the sun. It's pink, like a peachy pink colour. Got a fork up there, and it's got a fork here. And then it comes quite narrow, but I will fatten it up a little bit for the sake of uh, artistic license. Now there's a path coming down, but also there's water that comes down. So I'm just going to try and play around with these. I'm definitely going to have some water leading into the dam, even though you can't see it at the moment. In this place, there's another tree here, and there's another tree about here. Okay, so this is my composition. I've got one, two, three trees. These trees fork at the base, so they've got two, kind of two trunks. They both do that, which is sort of a bit of a thing that happens around here. They tend to do that on my property, so I guess they've had a rough childhood and they got ruined when they were little and they grew up into different uh, trunks. Some of the trees here are still damaged by fire, not the recent fires, but fires from 20 years ago. Still got down the back there, you'll see all those black um, trunks. They're yeah, 20 year old trees that, where the fire went through before we came. Okay, so that gives me a bit of an idea of how I'm going to lay out this composition. I'll darken this, these trees off, even though I'm going to come back later with light over the top. It's a rule of thumb with acrylic to do dark first and then light on top, unless you're painting as if it was watercolour and letting it dry in between, then you can do light first. But I will be letting this dry after this first painting. I'll do all the trees black at this stage. That gives me a nice solid um, under underpainting colour. Add a little bit more blue to this one, I think, because it's much greyer. And the way the brush just forms a soft edge, kind of like that, it just comes down. And that will vary depending on what material you're using and how, how coarse your canvas is. So this is a plain old duck canvas that I've, um, I've put together myself and primed myself and I've done a couple of layers, two or three layers I think, I can't remember now, I think it was, might have even been three. Anyway, now at the back here I'm going to go for a nice big brush, I'm going to just shortcut this a little bit in so much as I'll, I'll grab some green out, make sure I've got a clean pot. green at the back there just going to fill in the whole area with this and every now and then I'll dab into the blue just to give it a tiny variety I don't want it to look too flat as if it's all just one color nothing worse than that in fact I'm going to go straight over these trunks and it doesn't matter if they run a little bit. So basically once again I'm putting in the darks. So you look, you look at your scene and you look for the darkest, what's the darkest item and it's often black or super shadowy areas. So you put that in first. Now when I get to the, the top here I want to keep some of this white for the sky so I won't fill it right up there. Just do a couple of little bunches. And yeah, just for variety, I'll, I'll bring that down. I'll, I'll let a bit of sky be there, which isn't, it isn't at the moment out there. Right. my green and I shall 
I'll do the browns now and that will be my, my raw raw umber. I'm holding this up so you guys so you guys can see it but normally I just leave it lying on the bench. In fact I might just leave it lying on the bench. <laughs> just realized I've got a spare camera. While I'm here I'll just fix my hair. Thank you. I've got a I can see myself in the in the uh, camera as well. The other one. grabbing a few ideas of color. I, what I tend to do is often, apart from doing dark, I'll often do really bright as well and then come back, dull it down, or if I start dark, dull, I'll brighten up. But either way, I do like to have a few, I don't go monotone, I like to have a variety. And now that I'm looking at that, I think I need to have some red as well. I think I'll go for, yeah, there's sort of a magenta shade out there at the moment. So I'm putting the three colours that I might need now in here and I'll just get the really fat brush. Not worrying about clean water at this stage. So the, putting in nice, muddy that water out there is, it's it's got half of our um soil in it unfortunately i a touch of pink to it just see what that does okay the pink across the back here on the top of this walkway once again it's going to end up being lighter than this but i'm just doing it at this shade at this stage right across the tree, into that tree. Just wet my brush a bit. Just let the water run down, make it a little bit watery. Now back to the green, I've got some yellow and I'll mix it with that color there. Put some slightly brighter green on the side. It's going to end up being fairly iridescent, I think over there. One of the things I like to do at this stage is try and get rid of those whites that I don't want. But it doesn't matter that much, you can always come back later. So this is sort of the green around the edge. Not a lot, there's, a, there's more, more dirt than grass out there. Let's be honest. So I'll put some pink into that ground to make that's the beginning of the dirt. Once again, it's the darkest bits of that dirt that's going to be that color. And some more up here. Tiny bit behind, okay, I'll run it through. Don't despair, things always look worse with me before they come good. I'm confident this is going to work. <laughs> Rub that through. Just go right through. So this is what I love about acrylic. You can go straight to white at this early stage. Same with oils. A little bit of that blue. Mix up a tiny bit of light blue. See, I'm have a bit of fun with that at this stage. And by putting the, the light blue in, especially down here, gives me an idea of where I'm going to be putting water. I'll come back to the trees later, of course. There's a fair bit of light blue here that I've just gone over with the red. Come back to that and it runs down the hill. Oh, I don't know, I don't really want to be too... Um, mm -hmm. Just looking at this quick sketch I did yesterday 
and I'll show you later. I won't show you now. Oops. Put some more white out here. I'll come this way for the water. Right. It goes into there. Now I've got some lovely areas of white coming down through this distant water there. Little bits of reflected sky. Reflected sky. Uh, oh, what else have I got? Yes, yeah, so I just want to put some more white into this area. Darks in here. Clean the brush. Take off the white. Lovely dark blue. I'll grab some of my blues. Yeah. that red. So what I'm doing here is making these colors blend while they're still quite wet. I don't want to put, I don't want anything to be too um, monotone at this stage. So this is what you call an underpainting for me. There's a few spots at the back there. some pieces here once again dark at the front just to make sure I maintain that darkness at the front I'll make I'll get out some more French ultramarine have grass over the top of that that's just me putting in a bit of dark color as a shadow I won't keep saying it but that's what it is okay here and there color here and there okay so I've really gone crazy on this color and so much as and the whole thing is dark now I'll get some very, very, very darks at the back here and start putting those in. And one going across like that. Not too many at the top there at this stage. It's something I might do later. Just going to make sure this is really, really dark behind this ridge in general. It's the edge of the dam where the water's flowing through on the other side. We are losing a lot. Okay. So, this is a painting that needs to be done in two stages because now that I've done this much heavy work over the, the whole image, I will be wanting this to dry. I'll just put these trees back in so I know where they are. In fact, I might even put some white on them now so I can play around with their shapes. So it's kind of wet in wet work, you'd call that, even on this one here. I shall be coming back to that and adding a lot of detail here. Okay, so it gives me a bit of an idea. I think I, while it's still wet, I might just put a bit more lightness on that water. I think I'm not too happy, in which case I'll get a new, fresh, clean water. So, I'll jump out a bit of white. 
with it. Yep, I can go over here. Right, let's just rub that in over this side. Just gives that little bit of kick up. the tree again. Come back to those trees but of course got some lovely stuff in the water there and I don't necessarily know that I'll be painting over the top but sometimes it's good if you can get an opportunity to put in a bit of a, uh, a detail that's not going to hurt one way or the other you might keep it you might not. Sometimes it helps. Okay that side too. Gotta to bring make sure it comes out there. Yeah, I'll run it across those. Come in later and fix that. There's so much more I want to do right now. I'm not going to wait completely for it to dry. I'll just grab another brush. Make sure I've washed that out properly. It's, with acrylics, you've just got to keep washing your brushes so carefully. If you come from an oil background, you don't, you'd be used to not doing that. You'd just let them sit there with their color on them till you need them next time. But it's going to mix a little bit of a warm rock color. Touch in a few little rocks over here. in the distance. I know this is probably a bit silly at this stage. Just give me a feel for what I'm going to be doing there. Um, we are going to have lovely uh, green grass. I'm going to make a bright colour. It's always a good idea to keep my lid closed. I often forget to do that. It doesn't seem to hurt but just on principle. Okay, I'm mixing up a little bit of the greenery here. Touch it in while it's wet. So all this wet on wet work is actually a nice um, way of blending the colours together so that you don't get that harsh acrylic. I've just painted this uh, with flat colour look. So these are all being pushed into the colour underneath there. It's a good background. Later on I do do a very bright, hard, hard, hard edge style painting. That's my style and I will be adding hard edge over the top of this but I just love a background that's soft, blending, blended. Over there, the colour over there is really quite crazy. Quite bright, iridescent. The green's gone all iridescent with the rain. Whether I will be using that iridescence or not is another thing. So it's lots of green here. Foreground. Okay. Oh, it's still wet. I'll pull down here. Just using water on my brush. Redefine those trees. Okay. For the moment, I'm just going to let that dry because if I keep working on it, I, I'm now at the stage where I want to add some pure colour. And if I keep putting pure colour on top of that, it's going to end up with mud. So the way to stop mud is to allow that to dry 100%, which means a good hour. So I'm going to go and have some lunch and then by the end of lunch should be done.